This is Medrash Tanchuma Toldot. Now, you know, we live in a world where sometimes we, people complain, I can't see, I can't see God's actions in the world. God seems to dust his tracks and not be found. Well, this is certainly not true of Medrash Tanchuma for Toldot. In fact, it's probably a paradigm for a discussion of Bechira Chavshit, free will, because everything is sort of out in the open. Medras, for example, starts out saying, why was Yitzchak blind? Because Hashem wanted Yaakov to get the brachos. So Hashem sort of stacked the deck against Yitzchak. Another reason, why was he blind? Because God didn't want Yitzchak to see what the wives of Esau were doing right in his own home. Here, Yitzchak was following the footsteps of his father, Avraham, and promoting monotheism and fighting against idolatry. The wives of Esau, his so-called favorite son, were lighting incense to idolatry right in his home. Now, if, if Yitzhak had seen that, what would that have done to the, the relationship? Who knows, but that's not the way Hashem wanted it. And Hashem seemed to have wanted this enmity that, that came from Yaakov stealing the brachot, and it, of course, lasted until, lasted until Yemot Mashiach. So what is in our control? So the, the Medrash says straight away, you know, what we do with our life, how, what kind of an exalted life we want to do. If we want to have a life of, it says, masim tovim or masim raim, good deeds or bad deeds, where we go, what we do, and what we say, that's all in our power. No sooner did the Medrash say that, than the Medrash backs off and says, well, not, not always. You know, in the case of Moshe Rabbeinu, he didn't want to go to Mitzrayim, he didn't feel worthy of that, he didn't want to talk to Paro, and he went against his will. Same with Yonah, didn't want to go to Ninveh, didn't want to warn them, but he went against his will. So, okay, so what is not in our control? The Medrash says, well, things that you see, things you hear, even things that you smell. What does the Medrash mean by that? Perhaps the Medrash means what is was made famous, attributed to Baal Shem Tov, who says that Hashem is constantly sending us messages subtle messages, or maybe not so subtle messages. We could use them to change and grow, or we can ignore them. That, that is our free will. So the Medrash at the end says something that's not very well known, it's quite extraordinary. You know, when Yitzhak first discovered that Yaakov had stole the brachas, the Pasuk says, Vayicharad Yitzchak charedag dola ad ma'od. How does the Pasuk end? Gam baruch tiyeh. Seems a little awkward, right? This great trembling and he and Yaakov maintains the bracha. Well, the Medrash says, if it, does, if it seems awkward, it's because that's not what Yitzchak intended. He actually intended to curse Yaakov. He was so angry. But Hashem put a different thought in his mind, took away his free will, and he said, Gam Baruch Same thing happened again. Same word, Vayicharad, with the story of Boaz and Ruth. Imagine Boaz was lying in his granary, sleeping, and all of a sudden he was startled, and he saw a young lady lying there. And here he was, Boaz was the head of the community. What a disgrace. So again, he wanted to curse her. And again, Hashem intervened and said, no. And then he too ended up blessing her. So what do you see from that? You see that in crucial times in Jewish destiny, Hashem takes away the free will even of great people. And, uh, you know, because who is going to come from, <laughs> from Yaakov? Obviously the entire Jewish people. And who's going to come from Boaz and Ruth? Obviously David Melech and the Melech HaMashiach. So what about the rest of us? Maybe we are not so involved in destiny? So of course the answer is from the famous Gemara in Brachot, Mem Gimel Amud Bet, HaKol Bidei Shabayim, Chutz Mirat Shemayim. So we had to sum it up, I would say, that although we fully can never understand this in this world, but Hashem seems to operate at the intersection of free will and destiny. Have a great Shabbos.